sin. If there had been no sin, then no one would have had to die for sinners. If there had been no sin, Christ would not, have, would not have had to come and sacrifice himself on the cross. Look what sin has done to man. Look what sin has done to God. Look what sin is doing today. We're living in unusual times. Anyone with half sense will admit that, won't they? We're living in unusual times. And I suppose that in the day in which you and I live, there's more sin in the world than ever before. I think that uh, ample proof of that would be in the fact that there are many, many more people living in the world today, as far as we know, than ever before. And every person's a sinner, so that means there is more sin in the world today than ever before, and certainly things are more sinful today than we've seen them in our lifetime. The moral standards of the human race seem to have reached a new low. Do you agree? Things that we never thought we would live to see are happening every day. And you know things that we know are wrong. I heard something I won't even quote on television last night concerning a certain group in our country. I won't even quote it. They said it's becoming more acceptable. Some of you may have heard it and know what I'm talking about. Becoming more acceptable. I want to tell you, sin doesn't change its colors. Sin is sin. Dr. George W. Truett, one of the greatest preachers that ever lived and walked upon the face of this earth, used to stand in the pulpit of the First Baptist Church here in Dallas. In fact, he stood in that great pulpit for uh, almost a half a century, 47 years, I think, to be exact. And the great preacher, the great man of God would stand in that holy place and say to the people, it is never right to do wrong. It is never right to do wrong. And he said it is never wrong to do right. Dr. Truett's been gone on to be with the Lord a number of years now, but is what he preached still true? It is never right to do wrong. And it is never wrong to do right. Sin is sin. And right is right in the sight of God. When people have sinned all across the centuries, God has used a man somehow to call them back. We go back to the time of Abraham when he made intercession for Lot. But Lot had to pay the price for his sins. Abraham said if 50 righteous people can be found in Sodom, Lord, would you spare the city? And he kept lowering that on down until finally he said, if 10 righteous people can be found in the city, would you spare the city? And not 10 righteous people could be found in Sodom. And God rained fire and brimstone down from heaven out uh, upon the city of cities of Sodom and Gomorrah and burn them up. Noah, in his day, was God's man. He built the ark. He listened to God. Moses was God's man in his day. He led the children of Israel out of bondage in Egypt to the land flowing with milk and honey that God had promised them. But you know what? The children of Israel were just like people today. They would receive blessings untold from God, and maybe the next day they didn't seem to remember. Well, you say, preacher, their memory wasn't that short, was it? 
Look at the time when Moses was called upon the mount where he was to receive the Ten Commandments. While Moses was up there in uh, communion with God, the Scripture says they made a golden calf and began to worship it. God said, you better get back down there, Moses, and see what's happening. Something's gone on. People have a short memory concerning good things, don't they? Have you noticed that? They have a short memory concerning good things today. You let a person do a lot of good and then let him make a mistake and everybody wants to chop his head off. People don't remember good things like they should. God uses men to remind them and to lead them back sometimes when they've gone astray. In the beginning of the sixth chapter, I believe it is of Judges, it says the children of Israel did evil in the sight of the Lord. In other words, to put it plainly, as we've been talking about it this morning, they sinned, didn't they? And the Lord turned them over into the hands of Midian, the Scripture says, for a period of seven years. That reminds me to say again, and you listen to me, whether it's an individual or a family or a nation, no one ever gets by with sin. I heard when I was a child, and I've heard it all my life, you can't play with fire without getting burned. Haven't you heard that as far back as you can remember? You can't play with fire without getting burned, and you can't fool with sin without paying for it either. One of the most pitiful stories, I think, in the Bible is the story of Samson. Samson, the physical giant. Samson, the man upon whom God had his hand in a special way. What happened to Samson? Well, you know the story. We won't have time to go into it. We can just say it like this and cover it. He sinned, didn't he? He sinned, didn't he? What happened to Samson? They took pieces of iron heated to white heat and burned his eyes out. All there was left was just a socket where the eye had been, had been burned out. And they harnessed him up like you would a beast and put lashes on his back as he went round and round, grinding at the mill, paying for his sin. The children of Israel did evil in the time of Gideon. And they were turned over to the Midianites for seven years. And finally one day, God said through his angel to Gideon, I'm going to do something about this situation. They had cried unto God. And this is good for us to remember. When we sin, God listens when we're ready to repent. Unless we've gone too far. Paul said there's a time when people are past faith. 